Bluebeam Studio sessions are started and finished in PMRS to ensure that the, the PDF files are stored in the appropriate folder. Only a holder of a licensed copy of Bluebeam can start a session. So each local aid district should have been assigned licenses and the project managers will likely be the ones starting sessions. In PMRS, the submission package will be added to the documents folder by the LPA or designer when they submit them. At this point on the NJDOT end, you'll open it up before the session, just confirm that it's either set up and studio ready, or you'll need to go in, remove viewports, apply custom columns, possibly add page scales. And then when you wanna start the session, you'll find the Bluebeam Studio session uh, up here along the line in your documents folder. When you click on the Bluebeam Studio uh, tab, it'll open up the, the integration window. So hopefully everyone's familiar enough with PMRS to be disabling pop-ups before trying anything. Um, it'll pop up as a separate window. To start a session, you'll want to be inside the New Sessions tab. At the bottom left, you'll want to add your files by clicking on Browse for Files. Then you'll uh, have this folder structure on the left where you can navigate uh, to the files you want and add those. It's not going to be limited to plans. You can also add specifications or an estimate if you need it or a schedule. Uh, the project manager will determine what permissions they want to allow the reviewers. So add documents or save as. They can, the most important thing here is restricting attendees by email address. So in advance of a review, uh, the project manager will have a list of SMEs that he knows are gonna, uh, that he or she knows are going to be reviewing the document. The SME unit supervisor can provide a list of the reviewers who need an invite to the studio session. The main thing with leaving this email restriction unchecked is that anyone who receives that uh, nine digit Bluebeam code will be able to jump in the session and you know, monitor an, an internal NJDOT SME review. So uh, Veronica wanted me to stress that this is a must restricting by email. If an SME uh, supervisor says, hey, I got the invite, I'm, I'm actually gonna have someone else review it, then you would actually go to my sessions uh, where you'll have the option to invite folks even after a session has started. Uh, when you click on start new session, the next prompt will be to invite attendees. Uh, so ignore this uh, studio code, that's not our code for today. Uh, the project manager will have the um, invitees list. It should just require typing in a couple of letters for, for the first name, and then the dot uh, nj.gov handle uh, should just autofill uh, based on what you're typing in as everyone's in the system. You'll want to add a message that is gonna be sent to everyone that receives the studio session invite. At a minimum, the message should include how much time you're giving them to review, as well as your contact information if they have questions, and of course, a job number if, uh, if you are providing one. At the end of that, you'll click OK uh, to send the invitation and officially start the session. Everyone invited will receive an email that looks um, like this, auto-generated from the, from the Bluebeam integration. When a studio session is started with a document from PMRS in it, that document will be checked out for the duration of that studio session. So nobody else can, can jump in there and, and make any changes while an SME review is going on. So, at this point where you receive the invite is sort of where we landed at uh, module one, where we started out and we joined a new session. 
um, in module one, we learned all about the tools, we added markups, and um, for, for the sake of today, we completed that review of the plans and uh, set our status to finished. Um, so at the end of that, the project manager will have to return to PMRS to end the session. It cannot be done through Bluebeam. Um, that's to ensure that the files go directly back into the appropriate folder. As I mentioned here, if you need to invite extra users after a session has started, that's in the same spot in my sessions. And to finalize a session, after uh, condensing comments internally, which we're about to go through, uh, you will click that finalize session button. The last thing I'll touch on before we uh, jump back into the studio session is uh, something that's often overlooked when um, some of these other DOTs are, are presenting on Bluebeam. You know, what makes a good comment? Uh, Simply drawings are not going to do it. You don't want to leave anything up to interpretation for an LPA or designer. You want to make sure it's very clear cut. So a comment um, should always include four things. First thing you want to identify the deficient design feature. Something like, you know, what is shown is, uh, is this value. You'll want to cite the standard that isn't being met. Uh, the minimum grade is higher than that, so you're below the minimum according to the roadway design manual. Third, you want to indicate your cause for concern. You're worried that this is going to create a ponding issue if they, if they put something in so flat. And really the key one is describing the action that you want the designer or the LPA to take. And this should be as explicit as you can get it. Uh, so this one, you know, your idea is to uh, lower uh, an adjacent inlet so that you can get above that minimum slope. And then you want the, uh, the designer to also adjust uh, the curb grading accordingly. Typos, notes, and display issues may only need that action statement. Uh, so if you just want a note added on a sheet, you say add the following note. Um, if it's a typo, you can just say fix spelling or um, update uh, project name, something like that. Um, but for ones where some, a standard isn't being met, uh, you'll definitely want to provide context.